Hello and welcome to Interview on Ooze Report World. My name is Tony Kruger, I am your host today, and joining me is Professor Ian King. Um, he is a professor of arts and aesthetics management at the University of Arts in London with many years of experience um, on the international circuit and has come to visit us here and help create a new program at Westminster University as well as help us know how to preserve and keep Uzbekistan culture alive. Good afternoon. Hi. Nice to be here. Nice to have you here. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's a real pleasure. Thank you for inviting me to come into the studio. Well, I'd like to get started in terms of talking about your background. Okay. Okay. And so how you ended up visiting us here. Okay. So, uh, um, you know, I've been in, interested and in working in the arts and uh, cultural field for almost 40, oh, actually oh, over 40 years now. So, uh, you know, I've been around a while. Um, I started out in the theatre and I started out as an actor, uh, but uh, my acting abilities were, were quite poor. So they realised quite early on that really my, uh, my skills really lay in other directions than, than in, on the stage itself. Mm -hmm. So they put me in charge and they started to give me the opportunity to uh, manage theatres and such like that. And part of that management of theatres, I decided to... Uh, uh, well, I didn't decide. They asked, would you be prepared to develop and support um, bands, new bands and things like that. So I, uh, I set out and started to uh, promote new bands and, and groups and such like that. And as, the, as I got more and more experienced, I started to bring in people that were more well known. Um, the, 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 the remit really was that I had to make money. I couldn't lose money. So they wanted a, a program of entertainment uh, uh, for a period of time. And uh, I gradually worked up to, uh, mostly I, I started off with a lot of Americans, American bands that uh, were touring Europe at the time. And after that, I, I was successful at that for a period of a few years. And then um, someone headhunted me to go into, a, into the major leagues. So I then went into the music business uh, and promoting and supporting and touring with big bands across the world, mostly North America, uh, some Europe uh, and the UK. So that's where I tended to concentrate. So people like, as, you know, people like Michael Jackson, uh, Elton John and uh, Paul McCartney, people like that I worked with for, for a number of tours and I organised their tours and I went from one location to another. <laughs> Um, just making sure that basically people were making money for uh, uh, and everyone was happy and, then they, and, and it was producing a good show. So that's what I did for 11 years. I'm now in the new, new, biz, the new music era. I'm now organising fashion events. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, I now organise fashion events. So I do a lot of them around the world. I started off in uh, the big fashion events in London, uh, Paris, New York, and Milan, the big ones. And then I thought that would be enough. I thought I'd done my bit. And they said, these have been so successful, will you do more? And I said, well, I will, but I can't repeat the big four all the time. Um, so they said to me, what would you like to do? I said, well, I'd like to do uh, emerging fashion weeks around the world. And as there are over 100 fashion weeks around the world. Well, I'm sure that it has a lot to do also here in Uzbekistan. I think so. I think so. I mean, we, we, we developed a, um, a, a, a Jaipur sustainable fashion uh, manifesto. Uh, and we published that and it's, it's going around the world at the present time. But I think what I, what I, I mean, I, this is my first time to Uzbekistan, so, and I've been really, really impressed. Um, a few days ago, I hadn't really been part of it, but, uh, but I was here, I was invited by the University of Westminster to, to come and talk about their new master's degree, yeah. uh, about uh, arts and culture and, and creativity. And we can talk about that in a second, but what was also very interesting to me was uh, the interest in fashion here. Um, and it's been a big boom recently. It is a big boom and uh, what I was fascinated by, people wanted to talk to me, I mean they talked to me about arts and culture and creative and the creative industry sector, but they wanted really also to say, can you talk to us about fashion? So I've had lots of conversations since I've got here about the potential of fashion in Uzbekistan. And uh, only last night I, I was given a, a, a talk and I was saying, well, you know, I think We've got to realise that, that fashion designers will not come from the West in the future. No. They will come. I mean, what we're seeing in the fashion industry across the world is Asia is taking a lead. It it's is. now more, it's now the most, has the biggest potential as a marketplace in fashion than the West 
uh, and certainly, in, certainly over Europe, uh, certainly over the States. And uh, it, that, I think, is going to be very interesting. In those circumstances, we've got to see that fashion designers will come from Asia. And they will come from places like Central Asia, like Uzbekistan and other parts of Central Asia. What kind of designs will we have? What, what, what kind of designs will emerge? What kind of differences will be there? We will see different kind of colour combinations. We will see different kinds of expectations. You know, you know we're seeing how, how much... Blending of historical and Blending of modern. the historical, as you rightly say, you know, that, that historical, that contemporary, how is back fashion will develop, for example, I think it's going to be really interesting. But I think a reason behind it coming now more from the East is I feel like they're also taking ownership yeah, yeah, of yeah, their designs yeah. and of the, um, the culture mm. behind it because I've noticed over the years a few subtle hints towards yeah. Uzbek yeah. fabrics and designs in um, H&M and in other designers that's true styles. but the, the, you know we what I would worry about if I was uh, the fashion industry in Uzbek is to keep turning to the West you know, keep you know bringing these Western brands in and seeing them as this fast fashion. You know, I mean, I was listening to this story about Zara. Mm -hmm. In, uh, in it's a bit of a scary thing that people are buying Zara stuff. You know, because Zara stuff in the West is is people wouldn't pay the money that you're paying for it. No, because it's not seen as high quality. Uh, it's really is fast fashion, uh, and even though they do have. They had their principles are good. I'm not saying it's negative, uh, and their their value system is is something that you could admire, but ultimately it's fast fashion. Yes. What I would say is that really the the, the traditions and the and the culture that's here in Uzbekistan, and we we can talk about it here in a second, but it needs to be valued. You know, some of your designers here at the moment are not signing their stuff. But some of their designs, I've only seen a couple of things. They are beautiful. But they're beautiful. They're really beautiful. Don't fall into the trap. Become westernized. You know, stick to who you are. Stick to your own identity, and you know, and appreciate what you have here now. Appreciate and value it, and support the local designers and artists. Ex absolutely, that lies at the core of why I'm here. Because there are so many places around the world that only realize that afterwards. You know, when certain beautiful buildings have it. gone, it's gone. It's gone forever. It won't ever go. You know, and I, I can talk about different places around the world, even in the West that have lost those practices because they didn't realize what they had until it was too late. And, you know, Uzbekistan can learn from this now. You know, the Ministry of Culture um, and other government bodies needs to appreciate that you've got this beautiful potential heritage. You know, don't let it go. The UNESCO report from 2017 on, on the intangible heritage, it's, it's, it's a starting point. But really, that's just a report for UNESCO. Yeah. What does it mean for the average person in the street, you know, what will you see in terms of the communities that lie outside the, the, the city centres, you know, in the villages and things like that? What kind of support and, and protection will you have uh, for your stories, you know, the kind of traditions that exist in, in the past? Because I understand that Uzbekistan has got this a beautiful tradition, as many other places, of oral, oral, oral history. history. And even their music called Makam, it's all passed down from master <laughs> to student. Right. So, you know, how is that supported? You know, where, how have you recorded that? You know, where is it, what does it lie? You know, are you convinced that all the things that is special about Uzbekistan, you actually have got to record of? Those kind of valuations is why they're starting this master's degree mm -hmm. at the University of Westminster. You know, they're, they're trying to sit, work with the government to try to find a relationship with the arts and cultural uh, appreciation with the development. So they're, they're trying to develop these mediators who act in the, mi in the middle of trying to make a relationship between what's needed in terms of supporting arts and culture and the appreciation of arts and culture and its development and the uh, and the business side, so that they are much more resilient. Because and that's the challenge: is that is getting people to understand the connection between the business and the appreciation. Well, I think most people are in the arts and cultural field uh, around the world. Being a business person is not their first wish. They're in arts and culture because they believe in arts and culture. So then, when people start to talk about business, they start to they, they get a glaze over their face. They go, oh, it's not really. But if you look at look at the, the reality, is that. It's very easy to start a business in arts and culture, really, really easy. Mm -hmm. But the trick is to keep it going. What kind of skills do you need for an arts and cultural person, individual, or a small group of people, and therefore and sustain themselves over time, you know, so that they have 
a period of life that exceeds more than a few years. Exactly. You know, that kind of thing is going to be important for Uzbekistan. You know, I understand that Uzbekistan is going to, you know, is, is going to put a lot of emphasis on tourism, and tourism, I think, is going to be very important for Uzbekistan. But the question is, and I came here to say this. Yeah. What are they coming to come and do? What are they going to come and see? You know, you haven't got beaches here. You haven't got wild, you know, nightlife. So they're going to come here. There's something here that says that why will people come back? Well, you know? I think it's perfectly situated because it's a multicultural kind of patchwork yeah. quilt. Yeah. It's got all these individual pieces from being part of Asia and part of the West. Absolutely. And it all comes together. They are separate, yet they work together perfectly to create this kind of magical appeal. Absolutely. And that magical appeal is what tourists will want to see. That's why they will come back. Exactly. Otherwise they'll come back and say, well there's nothing here, it's just, just some of, old buildings. There's some old buildings. Or maybe it's just too touristy, it's yeah. too full of tourist, you know, rubbish really. And you can just buy that in any airport and stuff like that. That's not going to get people to come back again. Because you can go to an airport, you can go through a transfer and you just go straight through. Yeah. You know what what I would like to see, I'm sure most people just say who come to Uzbekistan. People for the first deliberately day. I want to see more. And I want to understand about who you are, your identity, the culture, the heritage. I want to understand. That. I want to be able to go to buildings like this. But I also really want to understand the stories that from the villages. You know what makes Uzbekistan Uzbekistan? Because these buildings are beautiful and fant it's fantastic. You're, the, you're going to protect them, exactly. but they're the easy ones to protect. It's the ones outside the cities. You know the smaller ones, the crafts, the the, the, the oral songs, traditions, the, the oral songs. traditions. How are they going to be protected? How are they going to be preserved. saved and preserved? Not necessarily for, for this generation, but also inside the country for your children, you know, for your children's children, you know. How is that going to be appreciated? And how are you not going to lose your culture? You're going to lose it because, you know, as we've seen in the West, every, globalization. You know, like the clothes, you know, go back to fashion. Yeah. The modernization of fashion is a real problem. You know, people are all wearing the same kind of stuff across the world. It's kind of uniform of, of the West. It's good. I'm not saying we shouldn't be wearing it or you shouldn't be wearing it, but at the same time, don't lose, you know, traditional clothing. Exactly. You know, it doesn't have to be traditional dress for ceremonies, it, but it can be something. It can be like a contemporary version of your traditional Absolutely, dress. Absolutely, you know, and this is where Uzbek design comes back into it. How can Uzbek designers blend. appreciate this and, and blend, as you rightly say, this, this, this heritage? with this contemporary and also make people proud to be from Uzbekistan. So that kind of challenge lies at the core mm -hmm. of fashion design, I think, in Uzbekistan. I think so too. And it's going back into the tourism, I'd like to, um, have you seen anything in terms of the advertising that they've done to try and attract it? Yes, I have. And I think that's good. And I think it's a starting point. But, but <coughs> as you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of competition uh, around yes. the world for tourism, you know, there's, you know, so the thing is, if I was a tourist, and I am a tourist sometimes, uh, not very often, I agree, but <laughs> I am a tourist, uh, I want to see something that gets my interest. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and some of the, some of the tourist advertisements say is a bit too bland, a bit too, it could be anywhere. Yeah, there's nothing that makes you feel it's, like... There's no real hook yet. Yeah. And I think that's where the arts and culture will come through. You know, the arts and culture... Once you get those involved. That's once you get them involved and you appreciate that potential, then they're going to come because they're going to come and go, OK, this is not, not just an ordinary tourist route. This yeah. is something special. You know, this is, as you say, this, this, kind of, this kind of relationship between the East and the West lies at the core of this. But it's also something about Central Asia as well, you know. As what a whole. kind of what kind of you know, because we talk about Southeast Asia, we talk about China, we talk about India and things like that. We talk about the West. There's a big corridor in the middle. Yeah, and it's not yet on over. the global map. Exactly. It's not really there yet, but that makes it exciting. You know, people It's like an undiscovered gem. Exactly. That is so so people will come here because it's this undiscovered gem. So if it's an undiscovered gem, what's interesting about it? What will make it something that what people want to come and see? So that, I think, needs to be what tourism has to do. It needs to set something out that says, we are unique. Uh, you know, we are unique. You're only going to get this here. You're only going to get this specific experience and feeling. Yeah. And if you really here, want yeah. to understand this Central Asia life, you know, the, I mean, what I was really interesting about, someone was talking about the mobility. You know, that, what does that mean, the mobility? You know? mm -hmm. What does that mean? Okay, tourists will be interested in going on these mobility trails, and I've seen some of the tourism behind. But what does that mean? You know, uh, you know, it, is it 
is it is it something why is it mobility you know what's yeah. the what's the history and the stories about that what impact as it has on the civilizations you know things like that um, and art. I think it's important to appreciate the difference between arts and culture and the creative industry. So yeah. the creative industry is, is really much more for profit. Exactly. And the arts and cultural area is actually an area that's unlikely to make mm -hmm. profit. It's actually a, a not-for-profit sector. So this, this sector really needs more protection because it's not a sector that will probably get philanthropy. Exactly. Well, I wanted to go back to, um, you mentioned bringing people from the different regions all together. And I think that's very important because each region, each city has their own specific culture. Even though they're all from Uzbekistan, every place has their own language, their own foods, their own designs and their own musical styles, which I yes. think it's... Absolutely. So again, it's really important to appreciate that, you know, even from inside the country, mm -hmm. because, you know, conversations I've had so far with local people and I talked to them about arts and culture, you know, sometimes the people say, well, I don't really know what it is here in Uzbekistan. And it's, so it's still quite early uh, and therefore it needs to be uh, something which is systematic. It needs to be something which is, which is managed effectively as a process. Um, and it needs to be done uh, in such a way that the negatives that could accompany this kind of process are minimalized. Uh, and manage so that there's there's not problems with the, you know with the government and things like that. so not the same that but those issues are addressed from the beginning. And what would some of those negatives be? Do you think? Do you really want me to go into that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so bribes, you know, bribery, yeah. corruption, and, and because you know what tourism can do, it, it can create situations where people, in fact, can exploit. Uh, and some of the issues, again, with fashion, you can do, it's just as bad with tourism, if not worse. Um, and tourism, about how you develop the tourist routes and things like that, it can be very commercial. Well, how would you go about then improving? Well, what, what they do, what we're doing, uh, I, I'm going back to Brussels tomorrow, and uh, one of the things that we are developing in, 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 for the European Union is a cultural governance code. And that will create uh, uh, a process of accountability and transparency mm -hmm. for arts and cultural organizations and arts and cultural processes that are involved. So therefore, uh, and you know, th th there are different frameworks, but including board members and how boards are created for these institutions. And these boards are, 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 will be managed and monitored. Um, the process and, and who they deal with will be managed and monitored. And it has to be a much more transparent and accountable process than in the past. So it's a realization that accountability and transparency lie at the core of, of, of account uh, so of, of cultural uh, organizer arts and cultural organizations because they are slightly different to corporate organizations so that difference between the corporate sector and the arts and cultural sector lie at the lie at the core of this cultural governance process and I, I think the other thing which is uh, which we should also mention is is, is business models, what mm -hmm. kind of business models will be necessary for the arts and culture. And again, that's the integrated because it demonstrates that the business models that may be introduced for the arts and cultural sector has to be uh, aligned really with this ethical code and this notion of, of, of business uh, uh, arts and cultural governance. So they're all, they're all interlinked, they are not separate, they yeah. are all providing a framework um, that will provide the arts and cultural sector a much more secure, both with inside it, but also from the outside looking in. Cool. Okay. And I had one more question, and this is just a bit more towards yourself. Um, oh, okay. How, if you could describe Uzbekistan okay. in three words, which would you choose? Hmm, that's an interesting thing. Well, I would say, I would say, uh, surprising. Surprising? Surprising is a word I would definitely put in because I was surprised about what I've seen. But I want to qualify that straight away by saying I've only seen it for a few days. So I'm saying surprising so far. But I would also like to say is that I'm intrigued. You know, it's my second word. I'm intrigued to find out much more about, you know, about Uzbekistan. And, uh, and the other word I'm going to put is, for me anyway, return. return. Because I would definitely return. Because I, I've just seen the tip of the iceberg. Just a little snippet. A little snippet. So a I teaser. want to come back and I want to see, you know, I, I, for example, I was coming in a, um, a car this morning, or yesterday, I think it was, and I saw the mountains in the back. 
covered I in thought, snow. I thought, wow, I didn't know there were mountains here. So I want to go there. I want to see what the mountains are like. So little things like that, but I, you know, I, I don't know enough about the air, so I'm curious. So. Well, soon the mountains are going to be covered in tulips. Oh, wow. Yes, all naturally Again. growing, and it's beautiful. See, I want to see that. And there's a lot of... This, it's a unique thing. It is unique, unique. and they all occur here naturally and there's so many different places you can go hiking there's waterfalls hidden in canyons and you're making me you're, you <laughs> should be the tourism officer you know you you're, you're making it attractive to me i want to come back you know i think there's a there's a lot of natural beauty but i also would say the people here are fantastic oh, I they have are really the food's been great the people have been great they're so friendly they're so hospitable so welcoming so and they, it's a it's a really i mean a really warm country to come back to so it feels I've got, like home. i've got more than three words really I've got too many words, too but many warm, words. <laughs> friendly, hospitable, I want to return, intriguing, you know, all those are all the kind of things that I do. And so I uh, maybe I might become one of your biggest advocates. Well, I hope so. Yes, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me in and, uh, and thank you uh, for this conversation. Thank you. thank you for talking with me. Thank you.